Hello everyone, welcome back. Now if you're new around here, my wife and I were building off-grid here in the Arizona desert. Building our own home, building a sustainable life. Now if you've been around here for a while, you know we had issues with our root cellar. It collapsed. Today we are finally going to do something about it. I am going to hop down there and I'm going to start digging this thing out and rebuilding it. The time has finally come to rebuild our earth bag root cellar. You look perplexed. Just thinking of what the best way to do this would be. Always good idea. Plan it out ahead. You look like you're ready to work. Oh, that's gonna be nice. That's perfect. Well, I've been working on protecting this area, especially from rodents. We have a lot of rabbits around here and mice and rats that like to chew on things. They can dig, they can climb. We dug a little trench going around the dome, put some mesh in there. And now I wanna put some plastic going around it, sort of at the base to kind of keep things from climbing up and in there. Yuvi, Yuvi, you gonna help dig? You gonna help dig? See how see how tough this stuff is. Uh, it's been sitting here collecting water and baking in the sun. Could be like cement. Definitely a lot of gravel in here and sand. Okay. 
You help and dig? Yuvi, you help and dig? Oh, okay. Ooh. I've gone too far. <laughs> You've gone too far. That's the uh, radon pipe we buried down here. Oh, yeah, you don't uh, unbury the radon pipe. <laughs> okay, well, that gives me a good idea of where the, uh, the gravel... The gravel, yeah, the gravel ends and begins. Be. All right. Okay. Radon pipe. <laughs> <laughs> she looks really happy just shaking your hand up there. <laughs> Last fall, I started having some headaches, which is not unusual for me, but these headaches were constant, day and night, and kind of severe. It was really wearing on me. Then my teeth started hurting. They were kind of sensitive to cold foods, and Jim encouraged me to maybe go to a dentist and get that checked out, but then it started to improve. I thought, well, whatever it was, probably resolved itself. Uh, I don't have to worry about it. Unfortunately, this was just the starting signs of a bigger problem for me. Good morning. So we're out here for maybe a couple hours yesterday, just kind of getting things started. And I think we made some really good progress. But uh, now it's bright and early, and uh, I'm ready to head back down and get back to digging all this up. Looks like Yuvia is ready to go as well. <laughs> So I've now stopped digging towards the bottom and I'm actually moving a bit more towards the top. See as I get toward these bags, I'm going to want to try and work from these top layers going down to the lower layers so I can remove that dirt and remove that barbed wire. Around the beginning of the year, my pain came back. It was mostly in my left upper jaw and those teeth, and it was worse than before. It started becoming difficult for me to sleep and eat. This time, I decided to go to the dentist. There, they did some x-rays. They did an exam of my teeth. The dentist was a little surprised that I didn't have any fillings or any other problems with the teeth, no cavities. There was nothing else wrong with my teeth that he could see. So he said his best guess was that it was my wisdom teeth. My wisdom teeth were partially impacted. They were kind of coming in at an angle and he thought they could be pushing on the other teeth and causing some pain. So he suggested that I get all of my wisdom teeth extracted. The wait time and the cost for getting wisdom teeth extracted uh, would be pretty great. And I was in a lot of pain. So I decided to go to Mexico. I found some good dentists there. They did it. It was quick. It was cheap. It was painless. It took me about a month to fully heal up from that and the pain was much improved so i thought that was it problem solved unfortunately 
The worst was still yet to come. So I've been digging for a while now and I'm pretty much down to the bags and I've made some interesting observations. Once you get down through that uh, upper layer of dirt, the soil is actually still kind of wet. It's interesting how this wall ended up collapsing and it's definitely a lesson learned and how it's just kind of a confluence of decisions that made this happen. So clearly after a large rainstorm, this collapsed, but it didn't collapse how one might normally think a wall might collapse and it didn't like come from the top down. These bags right here are from the middle of the wall. And the bags over here are from the top of the wall. So when that rainstorm hit, all that water was sinking into the ground over here, built up toward the middle, and it was so much weight and pressure, it bowed out that earth bag wall cause the top to collapse and all that dirt and stuff to move in. So one, clearly we had a lot of water coming off the top of that dome and down that pipe. Then that water, now we have some earthworks there to send it out to a basin, but it was coming straight from that pipe down over to here. And you could see that's exactly where that wall collapsed. We also had this plastic barrier in between the earth bag walls and the dirt. That's kind of there to prevent moisture from getting at the earth bags. Uh, sort of like a little bit of a vapor barrier. So I'm thinking when all that water did come down into this area, it moved in between this plastic barrier and the earth, and that water was just able to go straight down into the ground and just get really wet right there at the middle. So unfortunately, it was just kind of a crazy mix of uh, decisions that just kind of worked against us with this, but definitely a lesson learned and a real reason why this ended up failing. So one, we should have had a plan for that water and dealt with that right away. And two, maybe we could have diverted that water away from this. So I mean, the big lesson to take away from this is that when we built those eaves and we had water coming off of there, we should have had a way for that to go because then that water filter filtered right down to the root cellar, right down the plastic barrier to the middle of the soil and cause that wall to just bow out and collapse. But uh, lesson learned, it's gonna be a lot of work to dig this out, but the work has begun. We'll see, but I don't think this will be as bad as I originally thought. As spring began, my pain returned again. This time it was even worse than before. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. I was having constant pain in my jaw and then I started having these severe kind of like muscle cramp type pains in my head and my face. It was excruciating. And it got to the point where over-the-counter pain meds were not helping at all. This time I saw my primary care doctor. She did an exam and some labs. There was no sign of infection. And it was her opinion that it was my jaw joint that was causing the pain. So she suggested that I rest the jaw and she prescribed some muscle relaxers. Also, now that I've gotten down to the bag layers, I noticed that the dirt inside the bags some of that can still be pretty tough, so I don't know if it's going to provide like a little bit of a challenge going forward. This stuff is still very cement-like. <laughs> Look at that. dirt from one of the bags and I just lifted the whole bag out of there, dumped the dirt and it's uh, still holding its shape. Okay, we are out on the road. We're headed in
into the big city. Jim's at the wheel. Hey. I have a dentist appointment. So I've been dealing with some pain for a while. I haven't had much pain at all for the past week, which is great. Uh, but I still want to figure out what was going on, uh, see if I can get some answers. So I'm headed out to another dentist and I'm going to get checked out. She's not only a dentist, but she's a medical doctor as well. Uh, she does functional medicine, so she takes more of a holistic approach, like not just looking at the teeth, but looking at anything else that might be contributing to issues with the teeth. Uh, hopefully I can get some answers this time around. Uh, we'll see what happens. Wish us luck, y'all. All right, we're here at the uh, biological dentist. How are you feeling? Are you nervous at all? A little bit. I might be more nervous than you are. I'm nervous for some reason. I'm nervous going places and doing things. <laughs> All right, you ready to go in? All right, let's do this. Let's hopefully, hopefully we come away with some answers. Well, we just had our visit. Yeah, the... Is it? Um, no, no uh, video inside the. Uh, if you use your cell phone inside there, it's a HIPAA violation. HIPAA, HIPAA violation. violation. <laughs> so they did some x rays and pictures and uh, poked around a little bit. It is her opinion that I am probably clenching or grinding my teeth. She saw some wear of some of the teeth and uh, it's kind of some of the other symptoms that I'm having with muscle tightness and uh, muscle spasms and things kind of fits with that as well. So I guess the next step would be to get fitted for some kind of a brace or guard so that it relieves that muscle pressure and they also recommended some body work like massage and things for the muscles i can help with the body work yeah yeah and i did find like what helped me seemed to help me the most i was saying before was just staying active you know exercising stretching those muscles yeah actually you were in a lot of pain and dealing with that when you started, you know, just moving around, doing the stretching, doing some yoga, um, you kind of had some massage techniques you were using, and uh, it seemed to really help with the pain fairly quickly. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to keep doing that. Even if I'm not experiencing the pain, I want to keep up with uh, the massage and the exercise and stretching mm -hmm. and whatever else helps with it. I mean there's probably some kind of a stress uh, anxiety or something emotional going on as well I'm trying to work on that as well you know um, you know even though we live out in the country and you know we we I feel like we try and live a stress-free existence out there i mean well you, there's never going to be a stress-free existence there's always going to be stresses but there's good stresses and bad stresses mm -hmm. and um but even then uh look i mean it's still some stresses still get at you from time to time you know and um i think it's good to be mindful of those things you know i was kind of glad in a way that i had this pain just kind of uh, calling attention to that like I need to take care of myself uh, physically and emotionally I can't you know forget about that it's good to always be mindful of that mm, absolutely all right you ready to head back home yeah head back home to our 
low stress environment. Are you feeling stressed being in the city? <laughs> a little bit. So we gotta get you out of here. We don't, we don't. We don't want it affecting my teeth. <laughs> I figure just to make it a safer work area, might be best to cut some of that barbed wire, right? Probably don't want to be tripping over barbed wire and fall on it or something. I'm starting to get some pretty big strands right here. Oh, yeah. So I figure it might be best to get some of this out of the way. Cut right here. One right here. And I'll get these someplace safe. All right, well, this is day two of the whole dentist situation, right? We're actually back in the big city again. Second day in a row. Uh, yeah, they were able to get me in right away to get fitted for a, a brace for my teeth. Hey, so you think this will uh, be a big help? I'm hoping that it will be. Nice. All right. Well, it's going to go in here in a little bit, and hopefully we uh, will get this done really quickly. All right. Then another two-hour drive back home. <laughs> All right, y'all. Now we got some help. Got my brothers out here, Tony and Peter, and we are knocking this out like crazy. What's up, guys? They're hard workers. They can't they can't say anything right now. <laughs> I gotta get back to it. Making it happen, y'all. Oh, you gotta check this out. We're making huge progress. It's incredible. I'm gonna cut away some of this tarp here. I feel like we're not gonna need it in the redesign and it's kind of getting in my way. You know, having dealt with this pain for over half a year, uh, I've been thinking about it in relationship to my lifestyle. And something I've learned is that when it comes to sustainable living and self-reliant living, it's really more than just about food, water, and shelter and taking care of those very basic physical needs. There's your health and your mental and emotional well-being that you have to be taken care of. And that affects every other part of your life. So for me, it became about looking at myself with more self-awareness and finding the courage and humility to find these areas of weakness in my body and my mind, really identifying those things so that I can become stronger. I really feel like when we experience pain in our bodies and also negative emotions like anger, sadness, fear, 
it's a signal that we need to pay attention to what's going on inside of us because it means something's wrong or something's out of balance and we need to do something about it. You know, just ignoring the problem usually doesn't help, usually doesn't go away on its own. I think it's really common to want to avoid pain and discomfort. So you might either tell yourself, oh, it's not a big deal, I can just ignore it. Or you try to shift that blame or responsibility onto other people or situations outside of yourself. A lot of things are not within our control, but you know, blaming other people, blaming situations, or having other ways of trying to avoid personal responsibility, it doesn't really help us solve any problems. You know, it's not until we take personal responsibility and when you take ownership of that, you're giving yourself the power and the freedom to change things and to be happier and to be healthier. So for me, it meant seeking out a little extra help from some professionals who might have a little more knowledge than me and can maybe guide me into seeing some things that are going on with myself that I couldn't see at the time, and maybe just give also a confirmation of what I was feeling. A big part of it too was doing the work myself, looking at me, what are my habits, uh, what kind of thoughts and beliefs do I have, what kind of emotions are going on that are causing me to feel this discomfort, having more self-awareness, having some courage, humility, and educating myself more on my own psychology, on my physical body and what might be going on with that, and learning how to have healthier habits, healthier beliefs, healthier ways to express myself or cope with different situations of life in ways that are not destructive to myself or others. And for me, this is really a important key for living a life that's full of happiness and healthiness and freedom and security. Well, making some real good progress out here. It's changed a lot since we started this and we've got a lot of progress done. I'm going to keep on working, keep on hacking away at it, but I'm excited. It's changing and it's a... Uh... We're going to get this root cellar back in shape real quick. Oh. Instead of putting it all over there, I've been filling, backfilling some of this area, you know, cover that pipe over there. If uh, we do get more rains, better to have this kind of like covered in dirt and have more rain washing in between the dirt and the bags. And it's gonna need to get filled in anyway. I'm just trying not to go too far over the bags because we're gonna need to, we need to build on this. So all along in this decimated root cellar, there's some cinder blocks that just got melted into the soil over here. There's uh, one over here, and then this one I uncovered, and it was probably buried under over a foot of dirt. So uh, let me get these cinder blocks up out of this root cellar. What are you? Do you like that sound effect? <laughs> wow. Okay. 
I'll let you know if I find any more cinder blocks in here. <laughs> here she is. Uh... Man, we made some really good progress on the root cellar. Just dug up a lot of that wall. Many thanks to my brothers, Tony and Peter, for helping out with that. Uh, man, they really threw down and just made a lot of really good progress. Of course, there's still a lot to do. I still have to pull down a decent amount of those walls, but I'm liking the way it's going. And it's a lot of hard work, but I wasn't expecting anything less. And I made some progress on the geodesic dome that combination of the mesh and the plastic. I think that's gonna be real effective. But the really big news is the pain that you've been going through. How long have you been like pain-free now? Or pretty close to pain-free? At least a couple of weeks, I think. I think that really goes to show how you sort of self-diagnosed, kind of, but you kind of took steps to kind of heal yourself. And that's probably been the most effective. That's the approach that I like to take. You know, we're into DIY, self-reliant living. So I try to do what I can with my own health as well to just keep myself healthy. But sometimes I need some help. So it was about finding the right people to help me find that diagnosis that I needed so I could start healing and and feeling better. So I'm probably clenching my jaw and grinding my teeth. And so there is some wear and damage on the teeth themselves, which is causing tooth pain, but also it explains the pain in the muscles of my face and jaw and the tightness I'm feeling in other parts like my neck and shoulder and back. So it's not just a physical issue, it's you know, mental, emotional as well. So that's things that I have to be taking care of to, to really fix the underlying cause of this problem. Am I the underlying cause? Am I causing you all that stress? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we don't have tension sometimes, <laughs> but I think you're good. You've been a good support through all of this. So. Oh, but I'm glad we got some answers and I think, uh, yeah, just uh, sort of taking care of yourself physically and mentally. You got to take that time for that. That's one, one of the whole big reasons why we're even out here. All right, y'all. So thanks so much for joining us on this journey. I'm so excited to get the root cellar rebuilt. But most of all, I'm happy that uh, Jess has some answers and she's on the road. She's on the road to being pain free for good. All right, y'all. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.